So today we'll be looking at the Dimension 1200. And as we talked about in the general overview of the 3D printers, this is our largest and pretty much considered our workhorse. We actually do do some printing for industry and uh, for the most part, when they contact us, this is the machine that they'll use. This is the largest uh, by class that we have. And the print bed is, it's a 10 by 10 by 12. And if you recall and to review, it has a, a dual head. It's a swivel head assembly. And the left head is the build material and the right head is the support material. So there is the, the build material, the support material is under there. And you'll see that what happens with the screw is it swivels back and forth and the head gets closed by this device. The excess material gets dropped into this uh, debris tray and then the actual print itself is done on this, on this uh, tray that is removable, it's popped in, and clamped down, and it's ready to go. The two materials are in cartridges. This is the build material, this is the, the support material, and again, to review, there's actually two different types of support material. There is a soluble support material and a breakaway material. Um, here is an example of the soluble support material. I wanted to show you how brittle it is. So you see it just, it pops right off. Um, it's almost the color of root beer um, and, and it is very brittle so that it can dissolve. And I'll show you the bath that it actually dissolves in. Um, this is the, this is sodium hydroxide. It's essentially a, a, a salt that is poured into the bath um, and then the tray is dropped in. It's, it's empty right now just because it hasn't been running, but uh, it does heat up to about, I think, 60, 60 Celsius. And then through agitation and heat and that sodium hydroxide, um, the support material will dissolve. Now, if, if we use uh, breakaway material, obviously that's much easier to use to um, break off of very simple models. But if you have very complex models, for example, pieces that have uh, cavities or a lot of complex pieces, the soluble support is really what, what you're going to need to use. And this was an example I wanted to show you. Um, and this, this is uh, the precision that it will get down to, um, which is about 100 micron. So that's about one layer thick right there. So these are some examples um, that have come off the dimension. Because of the size, um, this is probably the most versatile. You notice that we had uh, some Star Wars lovers. The, the FDM, the Fused Deposition Modeling, or it's the ABS Plus material now, so it's a plastic, uh, actually does come in a number of colors. We have been using predominantly white recently just because um, it's so versatile and it's great for architectural models and for busts, as you see. Um, and here's a very creative bust that I did want to uh, point out to you. This was done by Lynn, a very, very talented student um, in the Design 204 class. And she basically took a number of 3D scans and utilizing Mesh Mixer, an Autodesk software, it's free, um, she made this conglomeration that was very cool. But um, this was an example uh, that was done a number of years ago, again in 204. And uh, this individual, the student, was a very talented musician. She wanted to make a, a violin that actually would play. And it does in fact play, it's out of tune um, right now. In fact, I, I should tighten up the strings, but you get a sense of the capabilities uh, another student a number of years ago made a ukulele that Professor Clark has in his office that's still uh, playable at times. This is a prosthetic um, that a student made a few years ago and it shows the size and kind of the stability, um, just how sturdy this material is. 
This is an example of the, the type of infill that this printer will provide you. There's, there's really only three uh, selections to be had when you are making the determination of how um, solid you want your, your model to be built in. Either solid, complete solid, which is very, very expensive, very, very heavy, very time consuming, but obviously if it's going to be used for something like a, an automobile or for a practical application, that may be what is required. Um, this, is, this is a low density infill, and then there's high density infill. You'll see there's always a, a minimal um, border layer that is built up, but then within there's that honeycomb. Uh, and even the low density models are more than um, sturdy for definitely proto testing, prototyping and for just fabrication testing uh, in general. So this is, in essence is our dimension. And to review a few of the, the facts about it, it is built by Stratasys. Um, this is the 1200. We did have the 768 for a number of years. And this actually is the material that was on it. Um, this was ABS and if you notice it, over time um, it was affected and kind of yellowed by UV. The new material is, uh, is UV protected, which is a, a nice bonus. Um, the machine itself is about thirty-three dollars to $35,000. A cartridge is about $250. Price per cubic inch for student prints is $3. Price per cubic inch for uh, industry is $10 plus a setup fee. So you, you kind of get a sense that um, we are simply trying to recoup some of the material cost um, when having students print, but we, we definitely are not making a, any type of profit off these printers. So um, let us jump into the software and take a look at how to load and get ready to print. And then we will come back over to the console you see, it's a very, very simple user-friendly uh, uh, device. We can wake it up and take it for a drive. So let's go ahead and do that.